dear students today we are going to see uniquely determined analytic functions in this we are try to find out the theorem we will try to solve the theorem like this suppose that if a function f is analytic throughout a domain d and f of z is zero at each point of z of a domain or line segment contained in d then f of z is nothing but uh, uh, identically equal to zero this is the theorem statement now we'll try to solve this theorem statement we'll try to prove the theorem statement before that we need to understand two important definitions one is open set suppose for example a set a set a is a set when the set a is called an open set if a set a is an open set let us suppose this is a set a the points which are none of the points which are included in in the a means a, con a contains none of its boundary points except boundary points and all the points which are nothing but included is nothing but called as a open set means a open set does not includes or does not contain a boundary point there will be no boundaries at all that's called as an open set and there is a points which are the point these are the points which are there in this now the points which are there if i join the points as a line segment means uh, the points which has been joined is called as a polygonal arc or polygonal uh, uh, pairs uh, you know a polygonal arc means the points the pairs which has been joined with a polygonal arc which lie entirely in the region a then the set a is called connected set okay so therefore the set a is open and the connected means open means it doesn't have the boundary points connected means it should have a polygonal arc now this is a polygonal arc which is there so this is called as an open connected set this is how the definition how the definition is linked to us that we'll see okay now we'll go for the proof now what the proof says first f is analytic f is nothing but analytic throughout d throughout d means domain d okay let us take a domain d let us take domain this is the domain d where it is analytic domain will be in any of the shape now this is the d which is nothing but analytic inside okay and d is connected and also open set just now i said no a as a is connected open set like that d is also connected means it may have the the points which can be connected as a a polygonal arc like this which can be connected as a polygonal arc okay this is what we have and f of z will be zero in this a line segment or you can say it has may have uh, that is nothing but i'll take l a sub domain or a line segment where f of z is nothing but equal to zero in this having f of z and d is open and connected set it is an open and connected set okay ah, we'll draw a beautiful diagram here with the help of that uh, how the d will be so that you understand better now i have taken like this the points which are nothing but in the form of like this this is z not this is z1 this is z2 z3 and so on this zn minus 1 this is zn okay this is the polygonal arc to this points okay this is the polygonal arc okay z not and this all okay there is a there is a distance the distance between the points is nothing but d okay now you must understand one thing that this is nothing but l distance between the points of the line segment to the boundary of the d which is open connected should be should be less than means or others you can say the d is the shortest distance from the point l this is the shortest distance from the point l to the boundary of the d d is the shortest distance from the point l to the boundary of the d which is lie entirely in d and d is an entire plane okay so d may be a positive means the small d may be a positive d is always greater than 0 because it is a smallest one d may be a positive value along the d 
and Zn. This Zn will be coincide with the point P. I may take Zn is equal to P. Okay. So therefore, what I'll write is I'll write all the points Z0, Z1, Z2, and so on. Zn minus one, comma Zn, which is coinciding with the point P. Now this we have taken, where each point, each point is sufficiently close to the uh, adjacent points. Now this point is closer to this. This point is closer to this, like that. Sufficiently closer. Now this is what we have. Okay, all the points we have. So therefore, what we are going to do is, we'll take all the points in such a way that I may take Z not, I may take Z one, and the Z two, the point Z two, Z three, and so on, and so on. Z n minus one. Z n. Now I'll take a a circle with the center, with the center Z not. I'm taking a center with the center Z not. I may consider that as n not. Means I may take a neighborhood with the center Z not. Okay. Now this is the line segment. This is a line segment. This is also a line segment. Or this may reaches to this like this, like this. Okay. And the point like this. This is nothing but L. Okay. Now I have taken neighborhood with center Z not, which is contained Z one. This is nothing but Z one, which is contained. I'll take one more neighborhood such that which is also contained, contain the center with center Z one and contained Z two. Now this is N one. I'll consider. I may take one more neighborhood. Which is nothing but contained Z2 as a center and Z3 as a point. Now this is one more neighborhood Z3. Like that, if I go on continue, I may take a neighborhood which is nothing but contained Zn, Zn as a center. This is Zn as a center. This is N N. I may take one more neighborhood which is nothing but Z n minus one as center, and remaining points are nothing but combined it together. Z n minus two will be there here. Now this entirely in the region, in the region, this is entirely in the region D, and distance between them is always less than D. You can take delta also. Your distance is delta. This is small D. You can take small D here. The distance. Now you can understand all the points means Z not Z one Z two Z three has been taken a neighborhood. These are all the neighborhoods which are there. Now Z not is a center for N not and Z one is also one point. So according to the theorem, what the theorem says is F is analytic. F is analytic throughout the domain D and F of Z is nothing but zero at each of the points Z on the line segment D. So therefore. We can have the result. According to that result, we are supposed to be prove in the form of like this. Now, what the result says is through the center n k. Let us take the center center for n k. I am just taking the gender in general n k. N k is nothing but one, two, and so on. Yeah, all the k values. Okay, n k is a neighborhood which is contained in D. Such that Z K be the Z K be any center of any neighborhood of N K any neighborhood of N K such that this lies the preceding neighborhood of N K minus one means this is Z not Z not is the center of N not and it has a point which is nothing but center to the Next, next neighborhood N one means Z not is the point, uh, which is a point which is nothing but lying to the N one means which lies in N one with the center Z one. Okay, so according to the theorem, which will be proved later, because any point if you take in the neighborhood Z not, f of Z not is nothing but equal to zero. f of Z not is nothing but equal to zero. Through the neighborhood and not according to the result which we put the through the theorem later. Okay, therefore f of z not is equal to zero. Obviously, f of z one is also equal to 
0 which is nothing but center of n1 because f of z is nothing but uh, analytic in the entire uh, uh, complex plane whichever the neighbor you have taken n0 so z1 is also nothing but analytic means f of z1 is also analytic to the neighborhood n1 so proceeding in this way i can say that f is analytic f is analytic i can say that f is analytic at the neighborhood n naught and therefore i can write that f of z is equal to identically zero because f of z naught is nothing but zero and f is analytic in n naught similarly since z1 z2 lies in the neighborhood n naught and z1 is the center of n naught and f of z1 is also 0 according to the neighbor n naught. I can say that f of z1 is also 0 for the neighborhood n1. And f of z1 is 0, then f of z2 is also 0. Therefore, f is analytic, f is also analytic at n1. Means f is analytic at n1. I can say that f is analytic means f is analytic at n1 means i may write that f of f of z1 z1 is also 0 so f of z f of z1 is nothing but 0 we got from the n1 so f of z2 i may write f of z2 is also equal to 0 so since f of z2 is 0 i may write that f is analytic f is analytic analytic at n2 f is analytic at n2 means when f of z0 is equal to 0, f is analytic in n0. Then similarly, f of z1 is also nothing but 0 because in, uh, in n0. So, it may go that it is also analytic. So, therefore, n, uh, in n1, z1 and z2 are the two points. But in n0, z0 and z1 are the two points. So, if this is analytic, this also which goes to analytic. This becomes the center of this one. So, this lies in the boundary of this one. Boundary of this one. So, Z1 is nothing but a center of N1. Z1 is also analytic. When Z1 is analytic, Z2 is also analytic. F of Z2 is also analytic. So, F of Z2 is nothing but neighbor. F of Z2 is nothing but is a center of N2. When F of Z2 is analytic according to the neighbor of Z1, then F is analytic in N2. And so on, we may get that F of Zn minus 1 is nothing but analytic in in the neighborhood n n minus 1 therefore and f of z1 is uh, since it is analytic because this is a it's a point which is lies in the n n n therefore zn is also analytic so therefore i can say that the entire thing f of z is nothing but analytic means f of z is nothing but identically equal to zero this is the just a formal explanation how the theorem can be taken let us go in a in a theoretical manner how we can prove this one in a theoretical manner how we can prove so f of z is identically zero so what we'll do is we'll take in a rough manner that since it is analytic if everything is nothing but analytic i may take that two functions f of z and g of z such that these two are analytic so i may write that f of z minus g of z is also analytic to prove the uniqueness so f of z minus g of z is also analytic so i may take the difference this one as some capital f of z okay if capital f of z if i have taken since these two are analytic these two are analytic then i can say that f of z is also analytic f of z is also analytic when f of z is analytic i can say that f of z is nothing but equal to zero identically zero when this is zero means this term is zero then I can say the difference between these two means f of z minus g of z is nothing but equal to 0. This may be equal to 0. Therefore, I can write that f of z is nothing but equal to g of z. Therefore, they are uniquely determined. These both are equal. They are nothing but uniquely determined. This is how the explanation of the theorem. We will see a direct proof in the next uh, video. Thank you.